There are many heroes around the Bahamas who have given so much to sports. Can you introduce yourself to the Bahamas, please? Really, that's, that's an honor and a pleasure to introduce myself to the Bahamas. Um, I think the Bahamian population know a lot about me now since I've been in the forefront in sports. But I'm David Knowles. Right now I'm a son of David Knowles, the son of Captain Harry and Charlotte Knowles. I was born on November the 2nd, 1917. And as you notice, November the 2nd is pretty coming up now. And now I'll be celebrating my 96th birthday on November the 2nd. And usually I have all, the, the, um, to celebrate my birthday, I have all the church members uh, come to my party at, at, at the Monica Gardens. And we have a great fellowship meeting at that time. And uh, I, I've probably seen that the church, everything. Uh, my father is a harbor pilot. And I've been a harbor pilot for 50 years. And uh, I took up sailing as a teenager. And I carried on ever since. So it took me a little while longer to, come to, to introduce myself. But I think that's the specifics of what I introduced myself. You know who I am now. Joe and Noel, 96 years old. Right. OK. What was your favorite sport? Well, as it turned out to be, Sailing and rugby. As I in school in Queens College, I graduated in 1934, and immediately I went from school right into the rugby field, as they were waiting for people, to, uh, athletes, to come out and, and play rugby. And then during the time, at the same time, my father was a great ardent sailor, and I crewed for him in the in the in the spring championship here in Nassau in the national spring championship. And uh, so I probably my main sport was sailing through the, through, through the interest of my father. And I grew for him, and therefore my interest continued. But my sports was naturally rugby and, 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 and sailing. And I was an athlete in school, having won the, the best boy athlete during that time. Okay. How did sports? Assist you, assist you in balancing different areas of your life. Well, uh, I think sports develops all athletes, so to speak, in their future training. Sports is very, uh, very important to what you intend to be. And as it turns out, it controls your lifestyle because you have to be uh, really concentrated on, on what you're doing. And if you want to be a great sports, great athlete, you, you've got to give up everything, so to speak. You've got to live a clean life. and. Uh, Fortunately for me, I never drank or spoke all my teenage days. And, and um, it, it turned out the discipline that I encountered doing sports, that it, uh, it helped me in all my business endeavors throughout my life. And uh, you can look back on it. And uh, my success in, sport, in sailing We'll come to that later, but my success is concentrated and uh, uh, really depending on your lifestyle. Unfortunately for me, my lifestyle was such that it, 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 concentrated, it, it came in with sailing, and sailing is a very sporting, it's not like running 100 yards or anything else. You got 10 mile course and you're out there. In the Olympics, you're out there for seven days racing. So you've got to be prepared for whatever comes with it. What are some challenges you faced in sailing? <coughs> well, sailing is a very competitive sport, so to speak. 
and, and uh, my competitive, competitive team for the United States and Europe. And uh, the main thing that I found that I didn't have the resources to take part at all these races all over the world, and California when we won the World Championship, and on and on. But without the help of individuals during that period, like Sir Roland Summit and Stafford Sands, I would never accomplish what I've done. So this is the main problem that I would have had during my period. And without the help of these people, I would have never accomplished what I, I, what I have. And today, government helps a lot of the athletes. In those days, government did not help me or anybody else in sports. So we had a week for ourselves, and as I said, that's the main encounters I had, trying to, uh, for my friends to raise money for me to take part, me and my crew, and going to London in 48. It was the Stafford Science who made sure that I went to London. We were not affiliated with the Living Association at that time. After that, the Living Association was formed in Bahamas. So I think that came from that. What is your most triumphant moment in sailing? <laughs> well, I had various triumphant moments. Bahamian look at the gold medal as a triumph for anybody. I won the World Championship as a first Bahamian to go abroad to win a World Championship. At that time, that put Bahamas on the map in the sporting world, not the gold medal. The World Championship came before the gold medal and the bronze medal. But in my feeling, being a world champion in the star class meant everything to me and the Bahamas. It's the first world champion, champion the Bahamas ever produced. So naturally, uh, that was very important. But naturally, the, the, the ultimate goal for anybody, for any, any sporting, is to win the gold medal. And if you, uh, uh, to answer that question, I would have to say the, the ultimate achievement of me and my crew had was bringing the first gold medal back to the Bahamas. My, not, my, the New York Herald came out in last big headlines, Bahamas wins the Olympics. Considering the, the population in comparison to the world or America, we won a goal, one goal, you know, for 300,000 people compared with 300 million somewhere else. So I guess you got to say the ultimate goal in my life. And actually, not only winning the gold medal at that time, but it carries on throughout my life. I'm introduced as the first gold medalist for the Bahamas. And all you know, friends, whatever, you know, my partners and everything else. And uh, so that, that stayed with you. And, and, uh, and whatever I wanted to do, one Bahamas, PABD, whatever I wanted, the population knew that the, I won the gold medal. So that, is, that I probably that is your answer would be my ultimate goal was the gold medal. Why is family support so important to an athlete? There's <laughs> no question in my mind, I would never and ever accomplish what I did without my family support. No question in my mind. And the main thing is my wife. She allowed me to travel all over the world, winning championships in Portugal and Europe and else and everywhere else. And she was at me when I won the first world, um, world championship in California. We just married that same year, married in, in, in February, and I won a gold medal in August. So you see what luck, luck she, she brought me. And ever since, she, she and my family, mainly her, has supported me in all my travels. You know, that trust. Today, Bahamians, you know, wherever they go, they have, they're very, very popular. But I never had a stigma of being 
by, by cheating on my family or my wife. And all my years around the world, I have a clean straight, um, clean, um, clean, clean of my accomplishment. And uh, uh, without her and my family, it never would happen. When I come home from these, these, these um, uh, championships, they run to my suitcase to find out what I brought them home. And the only thing they find, they shut the suitcase. There's only silver in here, Daddy. D D Daddy didn't bring me nothing. You know, I brought only the trophies that I brought back. So, you know, children that age were disappointed, but at the same time, they, were, they became very proud of me. Comparing athletes within the last 40 years, are you quite happy with their progress? But if we go back for 40 years, uh, of course I'm, I'm happy and proud. Our first medal in the, in the field of athletes, uh, Frank Rutherford brought home the first bronze medal in a, in a long jump. That was a turning point of Bahamian taking part in the Olympics or anything else. In 1992, it took a long time between 1992 to probably 2002 before the Golden Girls came to the screen. And uh, we cannot pay enough tribute to what we have in the athletes today. Sure, it took a long time. Uh, for me, winning the World Championship with the gold medal in 1996, 1964 to 1992. But they kept persevering and training and kept behind. They had confidence in the coaches, and nobody was more proud of Frank Brother than I was, though he broke the barrier. and. Field, field of sports in the Bahamas. And from then on, there's no holding back. We won the Golden Girls, the Golden Knights. <laughs> God bless that. What a day that was. But um, so, in my feeling, in 40 years of sports, maybe, maybe you enlarged a lot, but there's no question. What we accomplished since then, Chris Brown put in on his, um, at the, at the Tommy Robinson's Sports Center, and what he has accomplished and what he contributed to the Bahamas will never be forgotten. And the day of that run on Matthew Paz in the American, and they go for 400 meters, will never will go down in history. And they will, they will never be forgotten. So, Bahamas is very proud of what we accomplished during that period. How did you feel when you were knighted by the Queen? You know, <laughs> it's very hard to explain how you felt. I was knighted through the recommendations of Peter, um, for, uh, Hubert Ingram during his period of time. And he probably told me a year ahead of time before I was knighted, before I was caught, caught published in the papers. And I kept calling him and said, when are you going, when are you going to tell the public? I said, take it easy, man. You've got plenty of time, don't worry about it. So I, I told my family, I said, I'll be, I'll be knighted. And they said, hey, Daddy, when did it happen? That's the way it was. Anyway, eventually, in 1996, it was published in the papers, along with Roddy, Roddy Butler and myself, was done at the same time. And uh, I took my family to England. We made a holiday out of it, holiday out of it. My son brought his children, and they traveled all over England and to Ireland, and we did the same thing. But and entering Buckingham Palace, the day that we were both united, uh, was a story in itself. You'll never get the day 
as a Bahamian walking in Buckingham Palace and seeing what had been taking place for thousands of years. And here it is as a Bahamian being associated with this big, great thing. And my time came where they, they tell you what you had to do. And I got in line and my name was called. They were known from the Bahamas being presented to the Queen Elizabeth. And I walked to her and bowed to her. And she had a few words to me. Fortunately, uh, well, um, a couple of, six months before that, we, we had a cocktail party at the Queen on the yacht. So she, that was associated, she had a husband was associated with the Bahamas. Matter of fact, I took the Duke of Edinburgh sailing in Montague Bay. But come back to being knighted, you know, you hear about the sword being touched on your shoulders and all that sort of thing. I can, I now see the do with do, you know. And uh, he shook my hand, he had a few words, and that was it. So that was a crowning part of my life to be knighted by the Queen. Did you meet any influential people that changed your life? Uh, I have to think about that. People who have changed my life, I would say people probably did not change my life, but they helped me in accomplishing everything that I've, I have accomplished. Uh, I knew my father and his interest in sailing was instrumental in me carrying on. As a, a straight man. And um, so, it's a question of what I have accomplished, what I've done without the help of individuals. And I think we touched on that. But um, I, I don't think there's any indi individual uh, help me to choose my profession and to choose my sports. Uh, if any one person that was my father, who, thank God, he lived long enough to see me win the, win the World Championship and the bronze medal, but he died a year before I won the gold medal. But he knew that I, I, I accomplished whatever he said I had to, for me to be. So, yes, my father was instrumental in and forming form my life to what I have, what I became, and what I've done. Matter of fact, I was 50 years of harbor pilots, the longest in the Caribbean, and uh, which I'm very thankful. How does it feel to be called a sports hero? Well, as a matter. Uh, you know, I'm referred to as, a, as an icon. Well, a sports hero, icon, a good Bahamian contributor to the country. Um, nobody in life uh, would turn down compliments as you're living. And I'm the same way. I like praise. <laughs> and. Um, and, you know, write in newspapers, all that they would know to this, to that, to the other, and uh, drive stuff up and bread bread stubs. Uh, they are my people who, who appreciate what I've done in sports. And now I'm writing a book, and it will be coming out in November, middle of November. And we, associated with all what I accomplished and uh, all of my committees, all my charities be in full force. So I'm taking this opportunity to plug my book <laughs> that I hope that the community buys it and, uh, and they, they can read all what, I, what I'm telling you even more in detail. And my, my church work, uh, I think I'm a Christian and uh, 
but doing good for people will not get you to heaven. But at the same time, I have a very tough heart, and uh, I help people whenever I can. I help people don't read this because there'll be the floods in here. But um, all in all, I you got to be satisfied with yourself. You got to be uh, in your heart that you have done what you can for people, and my book would indicate that. But um, the public, it, uh, whoever hears this program, uh, would know that I raised a good family, and I'm very proud of them, and that's the main thing in life. What have you accomplished? What are you leaving back as a legacy? Are you satisfied with your life? Would you have any changes to make? And looking back on it, I don't think I've had too many changes to make. I'm satisfied with the way I've lived. Thank you. Give an encouraging word to the youth of the Bahamas. Come on. Give an encouraging word to the youth of the Bahamas. Well, I, I think we're in trouble with the youth of Bahamas. And probably the main thing is the lifestyle. We have too many single women having children, having babies, not knowing who the father is. And they got not a stop at one, they got two or three. And they keep doing this. And any government has a problem, problem of taking care of all these people all these children, the social services, they had to have enough money to take care of people like this. House rent, food, electricity bills, on and on. And what, what could I say to encourage these people? Uh, I, I really don't know. We, we have a problem. The government have a problem. The government have a problem in crime. And there's no government could, to, to solve crime. Uh, 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 it's a combination of, I don't know what, to stop this prime, crime. Um, I, I think a lot of it starts, starts at home, and urban renewal is probably doing the best. But it's a problem in the community. I wish I had a solve. Even I wish I had something to, to recommend to them what to do, but they're doing the best, and I, I can't say what they should do. But uh, uh, to me, to suggest what what could be done, I think it's beyond me. Only I could say, let's community work together. We need the churches and everybody to, to come out and see what we could do. Communities are doing their best, and. Uh, so who am I to make any suggestions what should be done? I can't do it, but I wish them the best of luck and I think they're doing a good job. But to stop crime is a problem in our, our society. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to share with us at this time? Well, I've been a member of the Walmart and Liberty Association probably for 30 years. Probably was too long, probably too long they left us there. <laughs> but um, uh, Riley Bar 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 Butler was the chairman, president of the Liberty Association. And I think we accomplished some good, but uh, I think we could accomplish more. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but. Uh, uh, I guess it was a good thing that we turned cha and shared our time and uh, for probably 30 years. I guess you got to look back and uh, I think that we, we did have to put the Bahamas on the lap, sporting world, sporting map. And uh, but rather, than, rather than Miller and his group, rather than actually served with us on the committee, and uh, he's now taken over the Living Association, the Committee. And I wish them all the best of luck, and I support them in the 100%. They have a job ahead of them. 
I think the Bahamas now can become the sporting region of the world. And I think Mr. Johnson, Barnabas Johnson, Daniel Johnson, is doing a good job in the sporting committee. And uh, they have a lot to work with. They accomplish a lot. And they can make the Bahamas uh, the Ministry of Sports will use this as the Ministry of Tourism Sporting Committee and use our talent to bring the tourists back here. So I think they're doing a good job. I support them 100%.